Welcome. This is the uh, end of course practice test for Algebra 2. This is question number 8. The question says, which expression is equivalent to x squared minus 9x plus 8 over x squared plus 9x plus 8 times x plus 8 over x minus 8 if no denominators equal 0? So really, the no denominators equal 0 thing means you're not going to get any undefined weirdness where you're dividing by 0. So we can just assume that everything works out great and perfect. So what we're going to do first is sort of factor the first group. So I've got this whole x squared minus 9x plus 8 thing that I need to deal with. So I'm going to factor it out into more reasonable um, factors to work with. So I'm going to look at this 8. This sign in front of the 8 tells me that my factored answer is going to have uh, the same signs. This tells me they're both going to be minus. So my factored answer is going to be x minus something and x minus something. By the way, if this second sign is a plus, your answers are going to be the same sign. They're either going to be plus or minus. The sign that's the first sign really is going to tell you which one they're going to be. If the sign in front of the 8 happened to be negative, that means my answer is going to be a plus and minus set. And then I pick the number so it matches uh, the middle answer that I've got. And I'll show you. Uh, it may pop up in another one. So anyway, I'm going to do, since my signs are the same, I'm going to do factors of 8 and 8 and 1, 2 and 4. I'm going to see which ones I can add together to give me the 9. And in this case, 8 and 1 give me 9. So this becomes x minus 8. Uh, and this becomes x minus 1. On the bottom, I've got the x squared plus 9x plus 8. It's the same exact sequence except for the fact that this tells me they're going to be the same. But this sign tells me they're both going to be plus. So I'm going to do x plus 8 and x plus one. If they had this 9 had been negative like it is before, they'd both be negative. Now I'm going to extend the line out a little further to include the parts and the, the times the second fraction there. So my x plus 8, I'm going to treat it with some respect and leave it there. And my 8x minus 8, I'm going to take that 8x minus 8 and pull out any common factors, which in this case would be an 8. So I end up with 8 times x minus 1. So I'm going to write the 8 here somewhere x minus 1. Now my goal is to get uh, anything that happens on the top and, and the bottom, so the numerator and denominator, I'm going to eliminate. For instance, if I have 4 divided by 4, they cancel out. Well, it gives you 1. So I'm going to look for anything I can cancel out. Uh, both of them have this x minus 1. So I'm going to eliminate those. And then I'm gonna, I can see that the x plus 8 ends up on the top and bottom as well. So what I'm left with are the things that are only on the denominator are only in the numerator. And I'm just going to write them out. x minus 8 over 8 times x plus 1. So if I look at my answer choices and see if there's anything possibly left for me to pull out, the only one that has x minus 8, uh, the only two that have x minus 8 would be g and h. And it says on the in the denominator x plus 1. So it has to be g because if it was a minus, it would be h. But in this case, it's g. So when you have this type of problem, factor out your numerator, denominator. Try to make little sets for yourself that you can cancel out. Look at what's left, and you can get your final answer, which in this case is, of course, g.